Good afternoon, friends. Today is Monday, May 18th, 2020. I had someone today um, email me and ask me how I got into farming. Um, they were interested because of some of the unusual crops I grow, and um, it sounds like they're a, um, a plant nerd like me. Um, and so I thought rather than just writing an email, because I've had some people ask me to about this, and I haven't gone into much detail about it. It's nothing to boast about or anything like that, but just maybe explain some of the motives behind what I do and so forth and understand where I come from. Um, I was raised he near here, um, Isleton, California, in lower Sacramento County. Um, actually, my first five years lived about 12 miles east of here off of Korea Road. Um, it was um, named after my dad's uncle, Papa Jess. Um, and my dad um, had rented a ground a ranch um, next to Papa Jess, um, and we lived in a house there. Um, later, when I was about five years old, um, when my mom was pregnant with her fourth child, my younger sister Lisa, or my youngest sibling, um, we moved um, to about four miles east of here, um, also on a ranch that my dad rented. And. You know, at the time, my dad was growing um, asparagus, corn, canning tomatoes, um, some wheat, maybe safflower, things like that. Um, field crops, no orchard crops. Um, though we did grow up with um, some peach trees and um, I think um, mostly peach trees, maybe one plum tree. I'm trying to remember. Um, I know Indian blood peach is one that we had a long time ago. Anyway, um, um, early on, um, I you know, got interested in gardening, um, and um, my dad would hire um, a Mexican friend. Um, I'm not sure if he was a, a farm laborer for some other farmer. I know he lived just um, oh, about a mile away, um, Joe Cervantes, um, we called him Mexican Joe. Um, he'd come and do yard work um, for my parents, um, flower beds and so forth, and, um, and I liked to hang out with him. Um, I remember, I think my mom bought me a packet of wildflower seeds and, and Joe um, helped me plant them um, and I hung around him a lot. Um, later on he gave me a short-handled hoe, which later lawmakers, you know, they prohibited uh, those short-handled hoes being given to farm workers um, for use. That was inhumane, I guess, um, having to stoop over and bend it. I work on my knees so much and I wondered, I wish that maybe some of these lawmakers would get on their knees more instead of dictate rules to us so much. But anyway, I use that short-handled hoe and I like um, gardening a lot. And my dad, you know, later commented to me that um, Mexican Joe told him that oh, I was really a plant person and I was going to be a gardener or a farmer someday that I liked um, growing a lot. But at age nine, I got a real bad reaction one day in the cornfield um, to um, the corn pollen. Um, I had hay fever really bad. Um, I had done the same playing in the cornfield the day before, no problem at all. And all of a sudden, one day, I had terrible hay fever. And since my immune system got um, triggered, I got pretty bad. Um, you know, from then on, and my dad, you know, said, ah, you know, you're not going to be a farmer. That you got a hay fever too bad. It's too tough." Um, and plus, I did pretty well in school. My dad um, was not well educated. He liked farming a lot, and um, he wouldn't come home and do his homework as a child. He'd come sit on the fender of the tractor with his dad and loved um, riding on tractor. Um, and um, me, on the other hand, I did pretty well in school. My dad said, you know, I had to go off to college and get a better job. And I did do that. I still thought maybe I would come back to the family farm, but it was more difficult. My dad had a partner, and, um, you know, getting involved with a partnership um, operation makes it more difficult. Anyway, um, going on, um, I, you know, graduated. I ended up working in agricultural lending um, from 1980 until 2007. And originally I was a loan officer and then assistant branch manager and then a branch manager and, and, and got to do my job pretty well. And then um, my wife Linda, um, she was working for Crocker Bank in Oroville at the time, which is now part of um, Wells Fargo Bank. And that branch closed up because of poor economic times and um, 
she got transferred to Sacramento and I ended up transferring to our um, district office of the farm credit system where I became a loan reviewer uh, and that's basically an auditor. I would go around five states checking out loan files and reviewing um, you know, adherence to policies and assignment of risk to loans and so forth. And you know, part of that, it was interesting you know, for a while. I got tired of it after quite a while doing the same thing. Uh, but I, you know, I saw many different types of businesses out there um, and some were pretty um, unique um, and many were you know, monoculture and um, you know, that's okay. I'm not gonna criticize them, but I really wondered what drove some people. I can think of a couple, like one um, um, almond grower that you know, kept expanding and you know, soon he got to over 20,000 acres of almonds. And you know, I wondered if that's 20 times more fun than farming a thousand acres of almonds. Um, I don't think so. I don't know what drives people to just keep doing more and more of the same thing. And you know, a dairyman um, that had you know a dairy operation with his sons, and pretty soon there were ten different dairy operations and with ten thousand cows. And that can be hard work. But not only that, it just seems to be too much of the same thing. And I didn't like that. Um, when um, my wife um, later on in late 1993, she got transferred to a branch of Wells Fargo in Walnut Creek and that was too far of a commute. We were living in Sacramento at that time and um, she commuted for a couple months and we sold our home there. I guess getting back to that, you know, I like gardening and we did our own landscaping um, and um, I remember, you know, we had a pretty large lot, um, relatively um, um, a quarter acre lot is pretty large in most cities in California um, and um, I didn't have enough room for all the plants I wanted. I remember one time wanting to plant an Oklahoma red bud, and I found the tree. I loved it. I wanted to buy it. And Linda said, well, you can fit it behind the barbecue. Um, and so I got that. But okay, I had room for one more plant. But really, I wanted so much more. I guess, too, at that time, at that home there, um, I, that was the first time I ever grafted a tree. Um, I grafted an apricot tree there. And, um, and so that was pretty cool, I thought. Um, I my dad didn't do any grafting like that. I'd heard stories about my dad's um, father. My grandfather died before I was born. Grafting trees, um, or our neighbor um, would graft trees for him. And I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, we, we sold that home and we moved to um, near where we live now. Um, we rented for six months and then this farm became available. And in May of, of 1994, 26 years ago, we bought this farm. 26 years and five days ago it was on May 13th I remember anyway um, this farm had pears on it and had been grown to corn and safflower and so forth the pears I farmed for five years um, and it was kind of interesting learning something new but the pears weren't um, a profitable crop to grow and there are a lot of pesticides involved with it control all the pests involved with it um, you know, coddling moth fire blight and so forth um, and, you know, after, you know, uh, three or four years of farming pears, I, in one of my um, lending jobs there, I saw a couple of times where someone had planted chestnuts, and I, in particular, one grower planted chestnuts, and I, you know, looked, um, they had gone to a UC Davis short course on chestnuts, and I read about it, and it looks like maybe we don't have any pests here. Um, and um, we do have maybe oak um, weevils might attack chestnuts some of the time, but other than that, really it's pest free. And so I decided um, and also at that time in 1998, um, we finally were able to have our child, uh, Michael, um, after trying many years. And I go, it doesn't make sense to be spraying all these pesticides right around our home. And so the chestnuts seemed like a great alternative. And I grew chestnuts. Um, Ended up switching all the varieties on all of those, um, top working them, done the variety, and we've um, direct marketed those. And um, so all of these, you know, I had 226 chestnut trees. I've top worked all of those. I have a few. I took some out to make room for some hobby trees. But I'm um, direct marketed it, and it was kind of fun having the interaction with customers um, rather than just, um, you know, selling to some wholesaler that really doesn't give a darn about the. Crop. They're just looking at the bottom line dollar. 
Um, and so I got, you know, a lot of close relationship with my Shush Hunt customers after, you know, the online marketing of them since, um, well, you know, at least 15 years now, I think, going on. And it's worked out well. I don't, you know, it's just only a little over four acres. I could do more, but I think that maybe the quality would suffer some. It's, it's a lot of work, hand harvesting and washing over them closely, hand sorting and so forth. Um, I got into figs. Um, I... My first fig tree was planted maybe, um, oh, 18 years ago or so, and I thought they were kind of neat, um, though at first I, you know, didn't think that any of them were great, um, but I remember, you know, maybe around 15 years ago, my first panache, might have been less, more like 12 years ago, my first panache was really um, good, uh, really good ripe one. You know, I remember it was like strawberry jam, and that was cool. And then I got, you know, became a bona fide figaholic after um, a few more years then. And some of that was the uh, entrepreneurial part of the thing. Um, I, you know, got to do things for fun, but also got to make a living. Um, Linda still works for Wells Fargo. She's going to be retiring. Her Independence Day is coming on July 4th then. She's retiring. And... I, I joke that then she's got a new job. She's going to be supervising me here on the farm. Um, but, you know, still, we, we got to do things that make money to put food on the table and pay bills um, and, you know, save for retirement and so forth so we can eventually stop working so hard. I've got another new crop going. I'm not going to get into discussing of that. I do get um, bored, you know, of things um, kind of quickly. I grew alfalfa. I rented some neighboring ground with a partner. Um, but um, I got you know, tired of that, or bored of that, I should say, and I, we rent out our ground there that's grown to alfalfa. And so we farm our chestnuts, our figs, and then a new orchard. Um, it's a berry fruit, uh, I'll just say that. And been working very hard growing that, and I you know, find um, you know, new things very exciting. Um, I like to grow many different things. I grow a lot of hobby trees. Um, white sapote, dragon fruit, mangoes I've been getting hot into. I got some papayas in a high tunnel, feijoa. I have about 20 different citrus. Um, you know, I have maybe about 10 stone fruit trees, um, um, ornamentals. I got figs here behind me. You know, I'm pretty well known among the fig collecting community for figs. And I have about 350 varieties of figs. I could have more, and I'm not trying to have the most. Um, um, I could have the most if I wanted to, probably easier than most because I got more ground than most. But I, you know, if I get bored of something and I um, um, move on to something else, and so I, I've it, removed um, many fig trees to make room to plant other fig trees. And I try them. I, if, you know, they're really good, I keep them. And if they're just okay, good, I maybe get rid of them after five years. But I've done, um, you know, well with that, and I think it's um, fun to keep um, this job, you know, changing and, um, you know, something that I enjoy. Um, I do think of, you know, starting some other things, and I started, you know, I just started a new orchard last year, a little over four acres, and I'm soon going to be 63. I joke that maybe by the time I'm 70, I'll be working harder than ever. Um, but we do have a full-time farmhand now, and hoping that I can get him um, trained to where he can manage most things without me having to um, explain things, so he understands the why, um, you know, in addition to the what on what we do, um, and um, so that we can travel some. We like to travel. I have friends in many different countries now, and a lot of it related to that. Now, my dad, you know, going back to my background, my dad grew mostly corn, and that's what he loved to grow. And I remember when I started growing alfalfa, after a few years of having some good alfalfa crops, my dad um, would not say that, oh, that's a good job, or what are you doing? You have a good alfalfa field. He looked at the field, and he saw that as just potential, hey, you know, you could disc that up and plant some corn. He wanted me to grow corn, because he loved growing corn. And I said, no, Dad, I'm not going to grow corn. I did grow corn for a few years, and and um, that wasn't um, something that I was greatly interested in, and it wasn't profitable on a small scale. 
The other thing is you have no control. What, I'm not any different than any other corn grower. My corn looks the same as anybody else's corn. Whereas, you know, figs, I could have different figs than other people have. I have different chestnuts than other people sell online. And um, I'm growing this other berry crop that is, um, I might be the largest grower in the Western Hemisphere of this crop here, which means I'm crazier than most people. But um, I like doing things that are different um, and just for the learning experience. Um, I, you know, think that we need to keep pushing ourselves to learn new things until we're just too old to um, go any further, I guess. But um, even, you know, when I retire from farming someday, I, and I will retire. Um, I read yesterday of a farmer up in Washington. I thought about visiting up there and um, at age 80, he's retiring. And I, you know, it's kind of sort of in the same boat as me here. He's got a long loyal following and it's you know hurts to lose that customer relationship but at age 80 he's earned the right to retire i'll probably retire younger than 80 because linda wants to travel a lot and i enjoy traveling linda does all the planning and i just drive or follow along so i usually end up finding some fruit guy to go <laughs> along now back to my dad again one thing that um, you know he wanted me to grow corn but you know beginning um he's not too good at mental health now but about five years ago he started saying you know too bad pops wasn't around because boy he loved trees just like you you and him would have been good partners so i wish i knew my grandfather you know he died before i was born um but he loved fruit trees too. And my uncle Tony, I talked, to, yeah, he did. He just like you, he loved fruit trees. So, you know, maybe even though I never got anything passed off, you know, in conversation with him, but maybe it's just in our blood here, I guess, um, of loving fruit trees. Uh, but even my mom, uh, my mom passed away at age 67. Um, and she was love fruit. I mean, melons and all the stone fruits that we had and so forth. So love food um, and love gardening. Back to my early days, I remember the first um, nickel I made was from gardening. Uh, my mom was, um, asked me to pull Bermuda grass from her iris bed then. And I, oh, I did. I would have done it anyway, but she paid me a nickel. And so, um, I, you know, I like, I can make money off of gardening or farming or whatever. But that's how I got started into farming. Um, my dad, I, we didn't inherit any of this here. My dad, I mean, he sold his land and he's still around. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't, at one ranch that he sold, he, oh, man, you want to farm this? No, I don't want to grow 200 acres of corn. I didn't want to get into that. Um, that's just not something that I was interested in. I, there's, you know, I want to grow some carob trees. I want to grow many different things. Oh, avocados. I have some avocados. I got another avocado for my friend Marta. I was pretty well known for pomegranates too. I kind of got frustrated with those because we had leaf footed bug problem. And, um, and that wasn't a profitable crop for me to grow either. So I still have about a dozen pomegranates, but, um, I like growing, you know, new things all the time. I got some new cactus plant from Mexico, some seeds that someone grew in Texas. I'm going to try growing that and maybe by the time I'm 80 we'll get some fruit off of those. We'll 